Over the past 18 months, the ski club has been given full insider access to Core Ski and Snowboard brand Amplid. Started by four-time world champion and industry veteran Peter Bauer as a way of indulging in his passion for ski and snowboard design, Amplid have a refreshing approach to production. This is the story of a small brand of just four full-time employees that is challenging the big boys in the industry and is helping to progress the sport we love through innovative products and sustainable manufacture, putting product before profit. It's early December 2013 and Peter is leaving his home in southern Bavaria to test some prototype skis and boards in the Austrian Alps. The skis and boards being tested are prototypes of products that could be released at the end of 2015. Research and development is one of Peter's biggest passions, so it's unsurprising that it's at the centre of Ampli's brand ethos. For the past 30 years, Peter has dedicated his life to ski and snowboard design, from his time as a Burton Pro to being heavily involved in their R&D programme, helping to develop boards like the Custom and Supermodel. There aren't many people in the industry with the same amount of knowledge and experience. The market right now is full of Me Too products. It's also full of um, brands that actually should not be in, in the snowboard stores because they don't have roots there. They go in there for economical reasons, targets. Um, the market is full of like cookie cutter boards because it's very easy for a brand to just go to a factory, take some OEM molds, open molds the, the factory has offered to, to those customers and then they just come in with graphics and put their graphics on and put a little bit of marketing power behind it and advertisement and team and that they might do well but I'd almost say they don't really contribute to the development of the sport. The way we're doing R&D it's not really looking into the market and trying to identify a hole and make something and place it in there in order to have people buy it. I think this is the, the wrong way. We have a different process regarding R&D. Everybody's riding day by day, skiing, snowboarding. We, we live in a ski resort. We, we have all the glaciers very close to the office, one and a half hours from Hintertooks, for example. We are riding all year round. And just this constant um, occupation of riding really um, tells you how to improve a product. Having an acute understanding of how geometry, cycle and profile affect the performance of a ski or board means that Peter understands ski and snowboard design better than most. But what looks good on a computer screen doesn't always perform well on the mountain, so Peter and the team regularly build and test pre-production prototypes. From an initial idea to writing the first prototype can take as little as three days. Peter uses a CAD program to put his ideas down on paper, then takes these ideas to the prototype workshop at the factory. If a completely new shape is designed, then prototypes are pressed in a prototyping mould. The end result is a fully functioning mock-up, but without the bells and whistles. It's very easy to develop and produce in the, in the Alps. Apart from all the ecological point of view, from like lower footprint and so forth, um, it's just a lot faster. And this is a huge, huge advantage when you are in R&D. You want to develop something new, or you want to get a new idea into into the shred. Sometimes we have an idea of a new ski shape or a snowboard shape, and then we make a, a prototype, and it works sometimes almost immediately. Maybe we have to go back, make a second and third round. If you make two, three uh, prototypes, this is a very fast example, right? And then sometimes we have an idea and we we try it and we we are a bit disappointed because it didn't work out the way we thought and we it, it takes maybe almost half a year to really get it uh, nailed down where we can say, okay, now this is ready for production. It, it, it really depends. Also with materials, if you try new materials, maybe they work immediately, but you don't really know, maybe in half a year it's gonna delam or break or start to, to crumble away. And those things, you, you wanna be really careful with new materials that um, you, you need to get the products out, make like some seeding programs, equip the, your, your team with those new products, uh, have, them, have them be on the snow for, I don't know, 60 days or 80 days, and then 
get it sent back, have a look in the lab whether the stuff really holds up, and then you can decide whether this should go in production or not. Having been a professional snowboarder for Burton in the late 80s, Peter knows the importance of athlete feedback. When we design a new ski, like, like this beauty, um, it's important that riders give their feedback about their old skis and about their visions. As all of his team spend in excess of 100 days a year on snow and ride the products harder and more aggressively than the end consumer, their feedback can ensure the product is good quality and works well. From free ride skiers like Teddy Bear to freestyle skiers like Kevin Salonius, the products are tested in a variety of mountain environments and snow conditions. There is no difference in the process of how to develop a ski or how to develop a snowboard and also regarding production there's hardly any difference. It's the same thing and there's, um, yeah, there's no reason why you couldn't do one if you can do the other one, if you really live both. It's really Peter's passion to develop new shapes, uh, to, to use new materials, to find new solutions and develop new feelings in a product. And um, I think this is what separates Ampid from the, the rest of the brands out there. It's really Peter's drive and his experience. When you try a new thing and you find out it doesn't work, it's not really a slap in your face. It's just, um, it gives you a new direction. It's, it's not really something which throws you back. It's, it's more like it, it, it gives you the security to make a step forward, but into the right direction. And this try and error thing is, um, it's, it's an empiric process and it's, it, it hasn't stopped. It's a constant process, R&D, trying new things, finding out that they work or they don't work. And it's been like this for me for the last 30 years. And of course, you, you, you get a lot of experience trying different things. And it's, uh, it's, it's very interesting. It's challenging and it's fun. it's fun. In the next episode, we go to the factory and look at Ampli's manufacturing process to see how they're striving to do this in a sustainable and environmentally conscious way.